So quite a lot of patients on thyroid hormone replacement ask about other forms of thyroid hormone replacement. When they look into the internet and other sources, they discover that there are two thyroid hormones, T4 and T3, and they ask about using T3, and they also ask about using what they call natural thyroid hormone or thyroid extract. Uh, there is now some guidelines from the European Thyroid Association, but it remains a very controversial area. So just to summarize the position first from the European Thyroid Association, which is that T4 alone remains the standard therapy. And that's what should be used in the first case for people on thyroid hormone replacement. And in fact, the majority of people are quite happy on thyroid hormone replacement. We need to bear in mind that there's a lot of people on thyroid hormone. Maybe 1% or more of the population are taking thyroid hormone. So across Europe, that's many millions of individuals who are taking thyroid hormone. And out of that, there is a percentage who are unhappy, and our own surveys have confirmed that. And I'll come back to maybe why that could be. The uh, European Thyroid Association guidelines, uh, which are present on their website, suggest that uh, a combination therapy with T3 could be considered in people who still have symptoms, despite the fact that they've been on thyroid hormone for at least six months, and the blood tests have shown a corrected level, a normal level of TSH, so a corrected level of thyroid hormone in the blood. But they emphasize that this is an experimental therapy, and if after three to six months there is no benefit, then it should be discontinued, and that patients should be advised that it's not an area that we know the long-term outcomes of, it remains experimental and controversial in the scientific literature, uh, and that should be made clear. In addition, it's recommended it should be done by centers that are specialized, so not by general practitioners, but by endocrinologists who have a special interest in this area. Uh, so that is currently the position. With regard to desiccated thyroid extract, extract or natural thyroid hormone, the European Thyroid Association does not recommend this. And the reason for that is that um, in the thyroid extract, you have a fixed combination of T4 and T3. You can't choose how to balance the two. And the desiccated thyroid extract that's available on the whole comes from pigs, in which there's a four to one ratio of T4 to T3, whereas in human thyroids, it's probably closer to 13 to one is the optimal ratio between the two. So in the pig extract, you're receiving more T3 uh, than you would in, in human thyroids. Um, I'm pleased to say in a way that we don't extract human thyroids, uh, it's not available as a, as a preparation. So both T4 and T3 are available as preparations separately, and they allow the specialist to adjust the balance between the two. So that's the current European advice. I can add a little bit more in terms of the scientific position. So there have been many trials of T4 and T3 in combination, and they are conflicting. In other words, some show benefit, some don't show benefit. We ourselves conducted a very large trial, and what was very striking is that when we compared people uh, on thyroid hormone, given either their own thyroid hormone back, without knowing that it was their own thyroid hormone, or the combination, both groups improved. So that emphasized to us that over a year's treatment, there was a strong, what is referred to as placebo effect. So if someone changes your thyroid hormone medication, and in fact they're giving you back the same treatment, you still feel better because of it. And that's good to know. It's good to know that uh, uh, there is a positive effect of being given things in a sympathetic way by a physician. But it does make it very confusing to know what is the specific effect of the T3. In clinical practice, we can't do a placebo study. We can't give somebody a sugar pill and say, try this and then try that. Uh, and obviously, if we try something, it will be because people want something new. In addition, in clinical practice, people who come for T3 therapy are there because they really want something and they're hoping for benefit. And that makes it maybe more likely that they would get a placebo effect out of the treatment. Equally, there is an issue about the safety in the long term. What we are learning recently is that actually very small variations in your thyroid hormone level over many years do have an effect on you. So slightly higher thyroid hormone levels 
over 5, 10, 15 years increase your risk of heart disease and you increase your risk of bone thinning or osteoporosis. So when it comes to the combination of T4 and T3, it becomes harder to know how exactly you're being exposed to thyroid hormone because it, the T3 is the very active form of the thyroid hormone uh, and it's, it's, if you like, the hot form and so is more likely to have an effect in the long term that might be too much for you. It might be helpful in the short term, but not in the long term. Furthermore, I often say to my patients, you can use a hormone as a drug. And I use the analogy of testosterone, for example, and everyone will know that if males take too much testosterone, they can increase their strength. Uh, but that's not in being used as a hormone now, it's being used as a drug. So we need to be a bit careful that we're not using too much of the T3 and T4 and getting more energy, uh, better uh, general feeling of wellness by using it as a stimulant rather than exactly replacing people's thyroid hormone. And that leads us to the difficult area of the fact of why are people still got symptoms when they're on thyroid hormone replacement. What we're learning is that more and more people are being started on thyroid hormone at more marginal levels of underactivity. So for people with very low levels of thyroid hormone, they almost all benefit from T4. But a lot of people have a very minor reduction in thyroid hormone. And what often had happened is that they had many symptoms, they went to the doctor, they had a blood test done, and the level is only slightly different, or in some cases, it's exactly within the normal range. And they request to go on to thyroid hormone and don't feel better. And so in those situations, it could be that thyroid hormone wasn't actually the problem in the first place. Finally, to add to the complexity of this situation, we do know that the blood levels of thyroid hormone don't reflect the levels in every tissue. Because every tissue has its own ability to extract thyroid hormone from T4. So it can convert T4 into the active form T3 within the cells itself. And you wouldn't know that from just the blood level. So people say, aha, could it be that my tissues don't work properly? Well, to be exactly sure, we'd need a brain biopsy or a heart biopsy or a muscle biopsy, which is not practical uh, in clinical practice. And we have been looking at people who maybe have variation in their thyroid activating enzymes to see if this makes a difference. But at present, that's only done on uh, results on very large populations and it needs to be repeated. So I guess I would summarize the position by saying a lot of people in life generally in thyroid hormone too are looking for improvements in the quality of their life. Uh, in the field of thyroid hormone replacement, uh, sometimes we're asking too much. But the European Thyroid Association would say if all other avenues have been explored, it's worth trying a trial of T4 and T3. But be aware that it could represent over-replacement, which is not good for you in the longer term.